Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. Today we're going to cover custom tasks. Now I'm sure you've noticed throughout all of the many tutorials you've watched so far you've seen a custom task or even an automation schedule. Today we're actually going to run through and cover every single one. It's going to take a little bit of time. So there are two ways you can access a custom task. You can either run it off the back of an existing schedule, like a single schedule, or you can run it as an automation schedule. Let's first tackle it as an automation schedule. OK. Here in custom tasks, these are all of the available tasks that you can run in CRD. Keep in mind this list is ever expanding and we add new features on a regular basis. So in time there may be a feature or two not listed in this tutorial quite yet. Okay, let's start with the basics, the general tasks. Run a program or open a document. To create a task, all you have to do is highlight the particular task you want to execute and drag and drop it to the right. It immediately brings up a mini wizard where you can actually create that task. You simply name it and then indicate where that particular executable could be found. Once you pick the program that you want to run, you can then add in any of the other optional command line parameters here. Then you can decide whether you want it to be hidden, maximized, or minimized, and you can determine CPU priority as well. Once you're happy with setting up that task, it now it's now listed here. Next up is printing a document. Again, drag and drop it to the right, and the mini wizard appears where we can now use it. There are two ways you can do a print document. The simple way is simply picking, selecting the particular printer that is going to be doing the printing, and then add the document that will be printed. If there's a particular file you do not want printed, you can simply click the red X to get rid of it. Using the advanced option, you can actually pick multiple files. for printing as well and make that file recursive. So that way we can actually print multiple files at one time. At this point, now that you have more than one task in the list, you can actually click the up and down green arrows to organize them accordingly. Next is wait and pause. Wait and pause is a very cool task where it's usually used in conjunction with other tasks. For example, run this program, wait for 10 minutes, and then print the document associated with it. Simply drag it to the right, name it, and then type in the number of seconds that you would like it to like it to pause let's organize this and throw this in the middle next is execute a schedule this is yet another task that is used in tandem with other tasks. This is great where you can actually create a workflow and execute multiple schedules sequentially rather than on a scheduled basis. For example, say you have a report that actually depends on another report which depends on data from another report and has a number of custom action tasks in the between. 
Now you can set up an entire workflow using the automation schedule that will kick it off at a particular time frame. Simply drag and drop execute schedule over to the right. And select the schedule that you'd like to execute. Next is send a text message. This isn't any this isn't necessarily have to be a report. This is different from the destination send a report to text message. This is send any text message at all. The indicate the text the phone number that you would like it sent to or pull in one of your contacts from your address book. And then enter in a nice little message for them as well. Why would you want to send a text message? Well, tie it in with some of your report outputs. Send a report to SharePoint or a file share or FTP and then send a text message to your folks in the field notifying them that it's there. Maybe you want to set up text message alerts for your customers. So based off of certain inventory changes or item availability, you can send text messages to your customers. Next, let's move to on to files and folders. You can do mundane IT tasks like moving and deleting files and copying files as well. Simply name the task and then select the file that you wish to copy. Next, you can actually move it to it tell us where the destination folder will be. And if that file is already there, by checking that box, you can replace it at that existing destination. Similar is the rename move file task. You'll pick the, re, the original file. And then you can actually simply select the new directory where that file will go and we'll send it there. You can also rename it too by simply changing the file name in this part here. We also have the ability to automatically delete a file. Simply pick the file, pick the particular file that you wish to get rid of and click OK. We can write a text file. Simply indicate what you want the name of the file to be and where it will be saved. and then type the text. If that file is already there, we can append it to an already existing file or we can overwrite that data altogether in the text file. You can create a folder. Simply figure out where you want where the parent folder is that you would like to go. and then name the new folder. Similar to create a folder you can rename or move a folder in the same fashion. Simply select that folder that you would like to move and give it a new name. You also have the ability to zip and unzip files. What's also great, you can actually use wildcards. If a file exists star dot star, then you can actually figure out, you can actually band select all files that meet that wildcard selection criteria. 
It's a great way to zip up multiple files automatically without you having to manually specifically select files. There are two ways to do it. You can do it the advanced way or you can do it the simple way. Simply pick the list of files that you want to zip and then indicate where the directory where you want those files to go to and the file name too. You can also enable zip encryption as well and you can decide the level anywhere between 128 or 256 bit encryption for your zip files. Likewise, you can unzip a file. Simply select the particular zip files that you wish to get rid of, that you wish to unzip. And then decide where you want it to go. Next, is merge PDF files. We can actually merge multiple PDF files into a single PDF file. You can do this a couple of different ways. If you're merging multiple PDFs that are located in multiple folders, we can merge all the files in the folders and the mult into the same and re replicate the same folder structure. Or we can merge all the files into a single folder as well and ignore all of the file structure. Simply when you click the add you have the option to select either a PDF file or the folder where the PDF, fi PDF files are located. And then just pick the place where these PDF files are located. Once you're set you then decide the destination file of all those folders. You can also add security to the PDF file as well. Similar to PDF output of a report, you can enable the PDF options where you can encrypt the PDF file, add owner and user passwords and permissions as well. You can also build an Excel workbook, a pretty handy feature as well. Simply drag it to the right. and then add the particular data sets that you want in order to build the worksheet. You'll connect to the DSN that holds the data you require. and then yank out the table that holds the information that you need. Parse out anything you want using the usual querying tool. And this is the data that we're now going to suck out that database and use in our workbook. And keep doing so until you've added all of the data that you require. What's great about this, you can even suck in data from multiple databases. Once you're satisfied with all of the data that you've pulled in, then you can now save the file as anything that you like.
and click OK.